Hello everybody, another exciting video today. Today I want to bring to you some software topics. So if you're interested in embedded programming and race conditions and interrupts and stuff like that, keep watching, otherwise go watch something else, wait for the next video. So lately I have fixed two bugs in the open inverted framework um, that caused data inconsistency or that caused uh, even resets of the processor. And uh, yeah, so today we want to look at what exactly happened. Good, so the first functionality that we want to look at is uh, the CAN string download. Um, in this special case it's the CAN JSON download. And that's being used um, by various utilities and also the CAN Wi-Fi module to download the list of available parameters of uh, the currently running firmware. And well, to start off, I will show you the issue. So here we're trying to download the JSON and you can see the result is very strange. If I scroll up a little bit, you will see the beginning. Here we go. So it doesn't really start as JSON, so some characters are missing and yeah. And then suddenly it starts repeating the same thing over and over again. And of course we wonder how, how this happens. Um, actually quite often this doesn't happen. It kind of depends on various conditions around this, but um, yeah. Let's just take a look. Um, so the way this works in software is you send a a request to the software that you now want to download the JSON. And this triggers um, this command right here. So it uses the, the normal print command that usually goes to the serial port and redirects it to the, to the CAN port, so to speak. Of course, not directly. That's where the issues come from but indirectly. So it, yeah, it prints the same stuff that it would normally print to the serial port to the CAM port. And the way it works, it um, basically repetitively calls this um, put char function of CAN SDO. And then that buffers up to 64 characters, puts them in a buffer, and um, and then every new CAN message will request another seven bytes of this string. So on one side we fill the buffer, on the other side we take the, the characters out again and, and send them via CAN. And we have to request uh, every seven bytes uh, separately. And yes, so I have uh, put it to a breakpoint now. I've skipped uh, 61 times to make this a little shorter. So. Um, yeah, the buffer has an in pointer and an out pointer, and they are spaced. Um, well, it's it's modular arithmetic. So it's let's not go into the details, but anyway, what you see here is a statement where we stay in a loop if print byte in is print byte out, because that kind of means our buffer is full and we have to wait for for additional can requests to um, empty it again. Now the delicate thing is that the can requests happen in an interrupt routine. So this while loop is actually interrupted and then the can um, in the can interrupt routine we dequeue the seven characters and send them out and then we return here and we will find the buffer has now seven free characters and we can continue enqueuing more characters. So what you would expect if print byte in is print byte out that this while loop um, oh, loops endlessly. Let's see if it does. 63, 64. So now our condition is met. So now if I go, if I press go to next line, we shouldn't go to the next line because uh, we should be stuck in the while loop. Oops. Hmm. So our while loop condition is met but we still left the while loop. What happened? Well, at this point, uh, the compiler doesn't know that this um, routine can be interrupted and that these variables can be, um, can be modified uh, by a second thread, so to speak. 
And so I think the whole whole while statement here is pretty pointless because either you're in an endless loop because we are not modifying the print byte in and print byte out within the while loop. It doesn't have a body. And or we don't go into it into the first place. So it optimizes out the entire while loop. Now, C++ or C in general knows something called the volatile statement. Now let's stop the debugging. And let's put in a volatile. And upload that processor. For now, I will remove uh, the breakpoint. Now, let's trigger the can download again, see if we have any improvement. Looks much like it. Well, this looks like valid can to me. And um, let's see if we have a different behavior in our while loop here. Here we go. Okay, I've um, again skipped ahead to um, <clears throat> shortly before the condition, 61, 62, 64. And now, aha, we stay in the while loop indefinitely. So um, with two simple keywords, this issue has now been fixed. Volatile. Let's go to the next one. Now, let's continue with our next issue, and I'm pointing the camera at um, my test board right now, and you can see the live LED is blinking. Now watch it closely as I run a little test script here on my computer. Uh, you can see um, I've connected a USB TTL adapter to the serial port, and now I'll be sending, whoops, So you saw the you saw the green LED stop flashing there, which uh, points to a watchdog reset. Now I can tell you this took me a very long time to figure out because uh, at first I thought it was some sort of a hardware problem, like um, a surge in the supply voltage or whatever. I I swapped different Wi-Fi modules, and well, what it ended up being is. Um, the terminal being prone to, to overloading. So basically, if you send in a new command while it's still processing the previous command, you could mess it up uh, in a way that it restarts the whole processor. Um, good. And you can uh, see the fix here now. Uh, so yeah, the software that's currently running where I demonstrated the problem. Um, basically doesn't have this statement as a DMA disabled channel. And that's uh, what is causing the issue. And I will also quickly show you the um, test script that causes the problem. Or the, yeah, that triggers the problem. So we open the C report at a pretty high board rate and then we send in a pretty long command. Now, if we don't disable the DMA channel, it means while the processor is processing the data, the DMA kind of overrides the data that we're currently trying to process. And I didn't track it down completely because it's really hard to, to, to set breakpoints that don't influence the timing to make the problem actually go away. Um, so I didn't trace it down to the actual byte where this happens, but basically overriding the data that's currently being processed somehow leads to some function running away because maybe the, the null termination of the string is lost or something and then it you got a, a memory access error because for example the string length function could be iterating indefinitely right so um yeah again this is concurrency like uh, two two uh, threads, so to see, if you say DMA is another thread, um, accessing the, the same data at the same time. So in this case, it's not an interrupt or multi-threading or something, it's, uh, it's DMA. Yeah, so this uh, line 
actually solved the problem. We disable the reception DMA after we um, received the command. And then once we have processed the command, we enable the DMA again and can receive new commands. Good, so two la rather um, significant problems and two actually quite easy fixes. One line of code, basically. To round it off, we can take a look at what it does now with a fix back in place. And we're pointing at the LED again. And I will be running my test script. And what we see is a uh, LED keeps blinking. Good, so I hope this little excursion into embedded concurrent programming has been somehow interesting to you. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye bye.